I'm sure that you're still getting some kind of tapping noise there, Cleves. Kind of like, Whoa, what was, what was that? He forgot his headphones. Whoa, like massive, like massive feedback. feedback. Oh, and I can hear myself. There we go. Hang on. Yeah. Right, we're all here. Knock the video Yay. on. Can't see James's face though. So. All right, hold on. That's surely a good thing. Oh, there we are. There we are. There is a little sleepy. Can hair. I go full? I don't know. If I'm go I've gone full screen. I don't know if I've ever gone full screen before. Oh. There we go. Right. Little dormouse is there. Hi. You all right, James? Yeah, yeah, good. Sorry about that, guys. I got back from the parents at seven o'clock and I thought, oh, I've got an hour. I've got, you know, I want, I want to be fresh. I want to be super fresh for the, uh, for, for the big relaunch. I thought, oh, I'll just have a little nap. Absolutely dead. Absolutely dead out. Oh, shit. Should we just Sorry, go for it? Yeah, let's yeah, go for why it. Why the hell not? Let's see if we can do this. <laughs> if we, well, we, if we can hardly remember how to turn everything on. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's that see here we go. Britain, an ancient kingdom with legends of violence, cruelty, and torment in its blood. Join your hosts, Ross, John, and James, as they bravely tread where few would dare. Witness their journey into the horrific history of British horror. They are... The General Witch Finders. Ladies and gentlemen, Goblins and Ghouls, after a small hiatus, welcome back to the 16th episode of the General Witchfinders podcast. I'm James in Bournemouth in southern, southern England. Yeah, I don't know why it says Dorchester. Um, I know. I, I, think we, I, th I think you might have been going to be in Dorchester when, when we were actually going to call this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. right, so, um, so, John, is it meant to be you next? I'm John Richard Pountney. I'm in uh, South Wales, which is in South Wales. <laughs> and I'm Ross in Dorchester in lovely southern England. And in today's episode, we're going to cover the seminal extra. <laughs> exactly. Tony's father has been away a long time. Now, he's coming home. Extro has returned. Once a man, he is now something more than human. Indestructible, ever-changing, evil. His mission, to avenge, to possess, to destroy. Why did you come back? I came back for you. Oh, my God. Joe! Extro, bearing powers of black magic from deep space. If you think hard about something, you can make it happen. it when you need it. Rated R. Extro is a 1983 British science fiction horror film directed by Harry Bromley Davenport. Starring Bernice Steggers, Philip Sayer, and Simon Nash, the film focuses on a father who was abducted by what could be seen as aliens and returns to his family three years later when he goes in search of his son. Even though the plot involves extraterrestrials, the creatures in this film are at no point referred to as aliens. Mm. Some fan. 
fans and who are these people? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bring them forward. Like, oh, it's, it, it, show me the names. <laughs> like it, uh, some fans like thinking of them as Lovecraftian type beings coming from another dimension. <laughs> the film had a six week shooting schedule and was completed in February 1982. Chris Hobbs, a sketch artist, helped finalize the visual concepts for the production, which originally involved a faceless rubber suit for a creature. <laughs> this was changed to a man standing with his back to the ground on his arms and legs. A mime, of course, was hired to perform the strange scuttle of the walk. When released on home video in 1983, the film was subject to a prosecution case in relation to British obscenity laws. <laughs> it was obscene. This film is an obscenity. <laughs> Unlike many other video nasties, as they were then called, Extro had originally put past uncut by the British Board of Film Classification with an 18 certificate for its theatrical release, with both its original and an alternative ending. Hmm. Bromley Davenport made two sequels to the film. Oh, no. Ex yeah. Extro 2, The Second Encounter, and Extro 3, Watch the Skies. <laughs> Neither film have anything to do with the original film. Oh. In March 2011, Davenport confirmed that Extro 4, open brackets, the big one, close brackets, <laughs> was in the works. Oh, we're still waiting though, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Even though he's made many deviations from the uh, exploitation film since Extro, the stigma is still attached as Bromley Davenport himself admits that getting a start in exploitation films as I did suddenly became unfashionable about, tw unfashionable about 20 years ago. And as such, movies are now regarded as smut, despite the fact they gave Mike Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, Jim Cameron, Joe Dante, Jonathan Demme, <laughs> and countless others, their first opportunities to direct a personal movie. Yeah. I love, I love, oh. I love the way that he's, he's included himself within... Self, yeah. yeah. And, I was going to say, I mean, I, I view myself in, you know, the same pantheon, John Constable, Turner, <laughs> Lucian Freud, just because I use paint. Um, there you go. <laughs> but you're under the same stigma that they were under, Joe. Yeah. Oh, like, she's just holding you back. No. Uh, what can I if I ask... From that, what is a sketch artist? I don't know. I, yeah. I, I was trying to work what, out like, someone who what, draws what? sketches or someone who does like the thing in like Leicester Square drawing. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> someone who draws Liz Hurley on like the side of Trafalgar Square or something. Oh, I thought they meant like a police sketch artist. Oh. Like, they used to have like, when people were attacks. <laughs> yeah. Can you identify your attacker? Yeah. Very or good. a sketch artist. And, you know. <laughs> Very good. Um. Uh, yeah. I. Pref I. That's already a much better film, isn't it? Yeah. Did, did <laughs> yeah. anyone? Has anyone heard of Extra before this? No. Watching this, I was course. vague. I vaguely heard of the title in that kind of nineteen eighties. Um, as you say, kind of video nasty era, and I certainly remember from that. Kind of, I think we've mentioned it before. Going into a video shop in the nineteen eighties and seeing it on the shelves mm. when you'd have to make uh, an informed opinion sometimes just based on the box art alone. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and oh does this look good? And it was never something that I thought Ooh. No, yeah, it, was. It, it was it was something which the reason we were on the, uh, on this, it, it came up uh, uh, quite a few times on, on Twitter, people talking about this is a, oh, a British hot must see must British horror see. film. And I thought, oh yeah, we'll give that a go. And I watched the yeah. watched the trailer and I thought it looks okay. It looks kind of like <laughs> Hellraiser-esque. I thought we'd give that a yeah. go. And um, I've got to say, it's probably, just uh, share my hand early, it's probably one of the worst films I've ever seen. And, yeah. and the fact that we, this, we've uh, we've had to abandon recording this uh, in the past because um, it means that I've watched this film four times now. <laughs> wow. because, Why? Um, Why? Because I can't remember them. But, these, these, Why do they, you take notes? I do take notes, but they don't. They mean nothing to me afterwards. <laughs> I, I, th I don't think Henry Bromley Davenport's seen it four times, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> the edit would suggest that no one has watched <laughs> it that <laughs> many times. Although, watching it the, the final time, this evening yeah. whilst waiting for James to wake up from his nap, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, a, it's actually quite good with no sound on at all. You know? no. <laughs> no, it really uh, is. And, and skimming through it. Um, My strap line for this film is, what is this film about? Uh, is, <laughs> How has this happened? <laughs> yeah. Well, should we go through it? And, um, and yeah. Yeah. As we go. So 
Film starts off with very promising, a sort of late eighties um, radiophonic workshop. It's, it's, music. It's, it's very early eighties. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And it made me think very much at any moment. Um, Wordy, the ghost from yeah. Word of Pictures, are going to yes. pop up and ask us uh, to, to sort of. Uh, read yeah. out what's happened previously on, on earlier yeah. episodes of Extra. <laughs> I've written the intro sounds like a shit BBC films trailer. The music is awful. It sounds like when you had when you bought um the first few Doctor Who VHSs in the 80s, they had a thing that said boop, 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 beep, 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 like BBC video <laughs> came up. But the whole soundtrack sounds like that. <laughs> I would listen to this music whilst But it's working. also by the director in a kind of um, homage Carpenter. to uh, John Carpenter, yes. Yeah. Not quite as, not quite as um, Successful. Effective. pivotal or as <laughs> evocative as um, Halloween and, and the many other things that he's done. It's more just like... <laughs> But, but it's probably played on a synthesizer the size of, of like a, a sofa yeah. of yeah. old, <laughs> which you had to change plugs to get different sounds out of it. But yeah, yes, um, and also a very sort of um, weird sort of like uh, it can't have been computer graphics, like night sky sort of like it must have been some kind of like airbrush yes. painting or something, you know? Uh, which yeah, maybe it's. T- but it's tediously slow, yeah. much like mm. the rest of the film, isn't it? Yeah. It's like the, the it's five minutes of like producer, exec producer, line producer, yeah. producer, producer. It's like we don't need any of this, guys. Just but it's all the people who like put in like five quid yeah. towards yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. London gangsters, um, paedophiles on the run. <laughs> all those Is that kind the of people. Like the nuns on the run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so I I've written in my notes just very strong boy from space vibes. Yes, oh, which yeah. ties into our kind of yeah. Words at the start, yeah. it's at the soundtrack and near as good. Yeah, oh. exactly. as, as scary. Yeah, yeah. still yeah. have yet to get my children to watch the whole of that without. Oh. They always ask me to turn it off. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I'd rather talk about that now. Um, so so then we cut to um. Oh, so I've got I I have to have on the screen the names of the characters. I can never remember the names. Of- well, it, that's one of my problems with it. Is all the men are called Sam, Joe, Dave, Jim, yeah, Tony, all these yeah. to- totally Tony, Sam, Joe, Tony. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, just very forgettable names that all sound the same. And that's right from the start. You're just struggling to even. The kid is called Tony, and you're like, no kid is called Tony. <laughs> All my notes just say, boy, dad, yeah. <laughs> girlfriend, au pair. Like, little boys are called Billy, aren't they? Or Billy, or Freddy. Not or, anymore. There's one know. called Odin in my uh, oh. in my daughter's uh, playground. Christ, who's the fucking <laughs> Um So we open with a weirdly promising, for me, Hammer House of Horror, a like kind of house in the countryside where some children, a child is playing with his father and the mother drives off in an old Peugeot. Um, and then in a very weird... Um, How much is Stanley Kubrick? 2001 <laughs> Space Odyssey. You have the guy throwing a stick up yes. towards the top of the house. Yeah, for the dog to jump. For the dog to catch, even though he's thrown it, like, over the house. Over the house. And straight away, we've got alien intervention. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so suddenly... Big spotlight shining down yes. on them. The, the wind machines from the Omen are, are yeah. turned on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lots of blowing, screaming for the dad. And then yeah. and then the, the boy wakes up soaked in sweat. This is, it. This is all her memory. In yes. the weirdest sort of bunk bed I've ever yes. seen. Yeah. Look, no. Made out of um, red scaffolding poles. Which it is- looked a bit like the Daleks had made it, I thought. <laughs> it looked like lots of Dalek plungers. <laughs> all, all, the, all the dozers off of um, Fraggle Rock. Yes. What I wanted to mention about the first bit with before the little boy wakes up is where the father is screaming and holding on to some trellis, <laughs> like rose trellis on the wall. Because obviously, like, the, the trellis that's held there with two rusty screws would stop him from being sucked into space. And or it's just, in a space. 
Yeah. And it's, I think that sets up the kind of um, lamentable lack of forethought that, that goes with films like this, where it's like, I'm going to pretend to cling onto this trellis. Like, no one does that. No one would do that. And, and it just takes a little bit more care to make it something else. But they haven't bothered. They've just gone with the trellis. And I think, bizarrely, for besides a dwarf clown oh, and, a, you're, and, you're, a, and, a life, and a life-size action man, <laughs> the best. Bes, besides the entire rest of the film, you know, those are the, the high points of the rest of the film. The rest of the film is set at this level, isn't it? Yes. Which is like a man screaming, shaking some trellis. With a bright light shined on him. With a bright oh, light yeah. shining <laughs> on him. So yeah, the little boy wakes up. I've written, this is terrible. <laughs> um, Ten minutes in. And then we... we Which eight minutes of that were titles. Then we... Mm. Do we cut then to where the boy lives now, which is a weird block of flats? Yeah. So it's, yes. like, it's a really... To me, it looks really sort of tatty down at a hill. They've got wood chip wallpaper stuff, but yeah, they've got yeah. a new pair. Yes. Like, so yeah. And the is, interior doesn't look like the exterior no, either, really. It looks it? like something round um, near the uh, what, hall or something, doesn't it? Mm, yeah, they, mm. that, that sort of... Um, Barcade flooring. That's yeah. a nice barcade yeah, None flooring. of that ties up. So you've got Ma- um, Mariam Darbo's from one of... Uh, which one is it? The first... Um, Daylights. Cheer up, Saunders. The operation's a success. And officially still yours. I have no intention of leaving it at that, 007. I'm reporting to M that you deliberately missed. Your orders were to kill that sniper. Stuff my orders. I only kill professionals. I've goaded no one end of a rifle from the other. Go ahead, tell him what you want. If he fires me, I'll thank him for it. Whoever she was must have scared the living daylights out of her. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the one where she does. She go down a hill on a on a double bass or something like that. Yes. Yes. Cello, cello. Yes, <laughs> she's a cellist with compo behind her <laughs> in a bath trying to overtake her. Well, speaking of um compo, we uh, we will come to that in a moment. Um, yes. Yeah, so yeah, the boys sleeping have. in a scaffold yeah. in bed. They got a very tatty um, flat with an au pair. Ross, 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 you you need to say who they are, right? So just just just. <laughs> yeah. Just for any, but does the film does the film enough? explain that, James? No, it takes a while to, for them to suggest that we learn that that weird scene that we saw at the start is that the yeah. father has been abducted, well, yeah. that, and then the, the, the family involved, yeah. the mum has moved on, and uh, there's a new man involved. Was yes. he American? And, Token American, yeah, 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 yeah. and. They have now moved from, you know, what can only be described as an edition of Country Life magazine. Yeah. Which is where we saw, you know, this big house in the country. So they are now living in London. Yeah. In a slum. So Although, that, uh, out that, that is the, the early broad strokes of the plot. Yeah. But, but we need, but also, <laughs> later on, they go back to the house. So it implies that that might be yes. a second home. But, but yes. that doesn't yes. make sense for what happens in a moment. Okay. But yes. Then, um, yes. Which I had no idea what was happening. If, you, if really you're talking confusing. about the thing, that I think you're talking about, not to give it away, it's like, who's living in this yeah, house? Who is it? Yeah. We've established that the, the boy is now living in, in, in London. So then we cut back to um, the countryside. We see yeah, mm-hmm. um, something flying flying through the air. At, at night, a kind of night shot, which is actually quite good, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like countryside. something kind of um, Toby Hooper version of, um, yes, uh, uh, what's it called? Invaders from Mars. Yeah, like, yeah, that kind yeah, of yeah. weird sort of like um, theme, which I quite like. They fit, Od- like oddly a, enough, I've put down, I've put down Christian rock video. And I have no <laughs> idea why. It made, made sense at the time. Yeah. Sorry, Ron. Yeah. I, that's the vibe. I, think, I think you wrote that probably a month, two months ago, didn't you, when we first watched this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. I did. So then a strange creature starts bubbling out of the, the ground. Out of a bog. Mm. No reason why it's in a bog. No, um, it doesn't come from space. It comes out of the ground. This is why you made yeah. fans think of this maybe yeah. as a Lovecraftian right. Okay. Um, yeah. right. creature. Uh, yeah, and it just it is like a very substandard Hellraiser. The, it's the scene from Hellraiser when I can't remember what his name was. Brother, 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 brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. brother beyond. Yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the, the main? Yeah, brother the, the Tony, main, the main Terry. guy. Uh, it's I mean, all well. Yeah. It's all very sub alien, sub the thing. It's it's sub everything, isn't it? Yeah. Basically, mm. 
So this bog creature comes out of the bog and then gets run over by a Vauxhall, est- a, a Volvo <laughs> estate. Which is playing kind of like medieval music yeah. played on a keyboard. That's what <laughs> I said. <laughs> yeah. What is the music in the Volvo? And why are they driving along? Listen to this weird pinky music. Because they can't music. afford any music apart from <laughs> the music which the composer can make on his keyboard. Stay in the car! Well, I was going to say, Ben, who's the only person whose name I remember in this film, he goes to investigate the bog monster. He, and he's yeah. screaming at his girlfriend, Stay, stay, in, the, in, the stay in the car! Stay in the car! <laughs> um, and then, so he gets done by the bog monster. But before, he, finds, like, it all, he finds it on the ground yeah. all covered in blood and stuff. And he starts pitting his fingers into it. Like, yeah, does he? All right, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what I've written down here is it's the Prometheus era. You know, for, for me, you know, one of the most disappointing films of all time ever, which is Ridley Scott's Prometheus, which I was so looking forward to and then let down. But in that, a, lot, a number of top scientists go on to involve an, you know, an alien spaceship and then like take their helmets off and start prodding things. Yeah. And things like, it's like, <laughs> what did you expect was going to happen? Yeah. And it's exactly the same, as you correctly say. He, he goes, stay in the car. A, in the, a request which is utterly ignored. Yeah. Immediately, she immediately just gets out. She of needs car. to get away from and that then music. He goes up to it, and she said, and then just just starts sort of prodding around this yeah. this thing. It's yeah. like, don't do that, mate. What do you think's going to happen? Oh, people. All of which I should say, it's also um, evocative of the lighting from the Total Eclipse of the Heart video by Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's all it's all got that kind of. It's all very eighties pop video, actually, isn't yes. it? And I don't mean yeah. that in a glamorous or kind of um, exciting way. I mean that in a really tawdry and very low budget kind of way. Um, mm-hmm. So then the girl, the girl in the Volvo gets it. Well, he he gets done in by the bog monster because yeah. it kind of stings him in the face, doesn't it? And he's got yeah. like two sting marks under his eyes. I don't know why, <laughs> but then it goes and attacks the woman in a really ploddingly unperilous kind of and she gets picking. her foot caught in the steering wheel somehow doesn't she yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, I so, that. so I have written why is her foot in the steering wheel <laughs> does this woman not know how to drive <laughs> um, this, this film has a lot of problematic driving which we'll come to later <laughs> But one, you know, one of them has to be someone who drives with their foot in a steering wheel <laughs> um just bizarre. It- Smash cut to uh, the, the little boy walking in on his mum and step uh, or uh, yeah, Terry, uh, yeah. and his book for having having sex like under the duvet in yeah. a real, in a quite a disturbing. Yes. And I imagine it feels to me like it was a uh, this maybe have happened to the writer director because it was yeah. very, it was very evo- <laughs> realistic and evo- evocative of potentially what it might be like to walk in on your parents rutting. But you also, the woman is also gets out of bed fully dressed, doesn't she? And then takes the little boy back to the bedroom. Well, I've forgotten to say that in my first page of notes, I've gone past this part, but this film is made by someone who has no idea how to pace or construct a film. And I'm I'm sorry if, what's his name again? Quinton P. Parks or whatever his name is. I'm sorry if he's listening. Henry Bromley Davenport. I'm sorry if Henry... Henry. HBD. (laughs) I'm sorry if he's listening, but mate, like, Jesus Christ. Well, he's now making documentaries about grand pianos and stuff, so I think he's moved on from this. Is he really? This, yeah. He's still going, yeah, is he? Yeah, yeah. The last film was, in, was last year. Let's he's... get him on. I think wow. we should get him on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make him answer for his crimes. <laughs> yeah. It'd be, be like him at The Hague. It's like war crimes. <laughs> Nuremberg. <laughs> yeah. I do not recognise the authenticity of this call <laughs> or this podcast. <laughs> Um, so then we cut to a blonde woman yeah. washing her hair in the mm-hmm. in the kitchen sink, and this is where it's like, who is this? Who where is, is this? Yeah, yeah, and is she in their old house? Because yes. I have put same house or different house because it looks like mm. the, the house well, at the beginning. It feels yeah. to me like it is the same house because it, it, yeah. it, it well, it obviously is the same house. Are meant to be, yeah, yeah, because he's returning there. Yeah, but later on, mm. they go to that same house, and it's as if. No, what, it wasn't someone else living in, in that house. It, was, it just that's a bit confusing. But yeah. um, mm. me and James very much like the um, that she's washing her hair with one of those uh, things which were 
very evocative of a, of a youth where you you pushed it over the taps in your bath. Yes, yeah. and it links the yeah. taps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of yeah. rubber hoses and stuff. She, she's doing, but she's only doing that so that could be used in a moment's time. Um, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Because um, oh, I don't remember. <laughs> How is it used? Well, so um, she gets attacked by the uh, bog creature. The bog creature looks like a totally different creature at this point. Yeah. To the one that was walking on its yeah. Back so basically, legs. got here. I'm just trying to make note of my um. So it's a woman cleaning her hair in a sink with a hose. Uh, and then <laughs> yeah. a, a penis comes out of a flap and, <laughs> and, and goes over her face. Yeah. And, and while she's trying to, are struggle, you sure you didn't start watching another film? Uh, this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then she's struggling with the monster, but but like really deliberately putting her hand inside of its mouth because the, the, whatever the puppet is could not move its head towards oh, it. So see, right. like um, and then we cut back to, so this is, we're going to so much going backwards and forwards, backwards and yeah, forwards from yeah, like yeah, go, yeah, this yeah. action and what's going on. Throughout. So the little boy who's in bed calling for his, yes. um, for his mum, he comes over, yes. pulls the covers back and he's absolutely soaked in blood. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. It, and he said that dad has sent the blood to him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if, if I went into my children's bedroom and I pulled out the covers and they were soaked to bed, I, I would have an absolute fit. Yes. So hmm. She's calls, taken a lot of tranquilizers at that point, hasn't <laughs> well, she? She just calls the doctor. The doctor yeah. who is... J- James, did you recognise who the doctor was? Uh, well, no, what I put is, that my note, it says, it's George Martin, the, B- the Beatles producer, <laughs> moonlighting as a doctor. <laughs> he looks a lot like George Martin. Well, at, well, who was he? So he, looking at the IMDb, it's only um, mm. this person, um, the, yeah. the Bond girl, and the, the mum who've got who've got yeah. any mm. pictures next to him. Yes, and I, yes, I don't yes. recognise him. Clicked on yeah, it. Yeah, you do. It is. He is. He was in two hundred and thirty episodes of a very uh, popular uh, BBC television program. Go on. He's Howard uh, from um, uh, Last of the Last Summer Wine. Summer Wine. Ah, Howard ah, Marina. Howard yeah. Marina. Who, but he had a moustache in that. Yeah. Who recently yes. died whilst John was on holiday it in is. in um? So I said we've killed Richard Donner, we've killed <laughs> Howard. Who's the, other per- who's the other person we killed for our podcast? I can't remember. Um, John Chalice, not, uh, <laughs> not, not, not Roger Moore. No. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yes. This episode is um, this episode is um dedicated to John Chalice. Um, <laughs> every, ep- every episode and, is dedicated um, to John and Roger Lloyd Pack as well yeah, yes. I think yes. yes and his father Charles Lloyd Pack so the dog is called Divine she's got a dog called Divine yeah. the sh- so the dog is, is scared then the penis monster comes in I've said slow so slow terrible effects boy is covered in blood what the F incoherent incoherent and awful yeah so what, what, what is that kind of montage of and, it, and then they cut back again to the dog eating a pile of, like, rotting flesh or something. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. girl, the woman, has now got an enormously um, enlarged Extended stomach. Well, stomach. Well, yeah. stomach. Yeah. It says, yeah. well, we've all, we've all woken up like this, surrounded by alien viscera, <laughs> haven't we? We've all had a night, oh, where are, oh I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by alien viscera. It's For me, strange. I have no idea why he's been taken, then the ship has come back, then the bog monster has come out of the bog, gone to mm. this woman, and then mm. impregnated this woman. Yes. Then she gives birth to the father. Yeah, a full size yes. man. Yeah, comes out. Yeah, of comes yes. out of her. Yeah. None, none of that makes sense or or needs to happen for and, the narrative. Gnawing through really? an umbilical cord. Well, why? Yeah, why is he chewing bits of rubber? It's just stupid. However, I did, I did feel like the the effects of that were pretty good. Some of the effects were quite good, actually. Yeah, but but kind of um not given enough screen time no it's so it's it's bizarre to say that because it happens really slowly but you can't actually see very much of what's happening can you no but so the horror of it is kind of very kind of depleted because it's just like (laughs) it it reminded me of ace ventura coming out the back end of a a, 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 a rhino but um (laughs) but this is where he she he uses that hose she was washing her hair with in order to wash the blood off of him so I, feel, oh, yeah. so I feel like right. it was kind of set up to right, kick off his gun because I needed to yeah. do that. And then he goes yeah. off and he, he steals the clothes from the person who who the creature, the bog creature had killed earlier. Yes, and gets in the car mm. with the corpse of the the woman and drives yeah. off with yeah, with yeah, 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 yeah. So then he rings his wife. Um, how he remembers her number when when he's an alien from outer space who can't speak, we don't know. But he also melts the phone handle. 
but he doesn't melt the Volvo. <laughs> so again, it's like the receiver, he's holding the receiver, the receiver smoking. So it's like, oh, I tell you, what's a great idea? We can make that receiver smoke. Okay, yeah, do it. But then it's like, that doesn't fit in with the rest of the narrative. The, Vol the Volvo's mm. indestructible. Yeah. <laughs> so then he goes, he parks it somewhere, and then I've written, horrid kid, awful characterization. I don't know if you're meant to feel sorry for the child, but the child is obnoxious yeah. little twat, isn't he's, well, he? So got, that's... Yeah, you see him playing with his pet snake at the breakfast table, which should be like, oh, I know. get that, get that oh, away from the breakfast. Get yeah. that dirty yeah. thing away. And then we meet Lou Bill from EastEnders, who's... Um... And Lou, Lou Bill is dubbed with a really weird foreign voice. It was, is it? Okay. I, I... There's, there's a lot of really, really weird post-dubbing in this film, where... Is it? I think it's the scene where... Um, where the, where the the kid is ill in bed, mm. there's loads mm. of bits where the mother's face is obscured, and and you can tell that it's been dubbed with someone going, yeah. "Get to bed, Timmy. <laughs> Sleep well, Tony, my darling, Tony." Tony. And, and it's really weird that obviously they they've done that scene and probably not scripted enough dialogue, mm. and then been like, "Actually, this looks really weird because these people aren't talking to each other." Yeah, because the doctor just leaves. He's like. There's nothing wrong with the boy. Goodbye. Yeah, and, but, but he said, where's all the blood come from then? Yeah, yeah. 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 There was buckets yeah. of blood in that bed. Yeah. Well, and yeah. where, you're like, you've managed to clean it all up. Yeah. And, the, and then the au pair's it, coming out and shouting at him. It's like, hang on, look, you just work here, love. Just get back to bed. <laughs> What's going on? on it. And then we yeah. have the, the gratuitous um, sex scene with the, yeah. the Bond girl. Which is that what, like. yes. Yes, is that what happens yes. at that point? I haven't even bothered to make notes about that because I just thought, oh, my God, yeah. this is ridiculous. It, 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 for no, it, there, there, there is no um, plot reason for... It's an, it's an alarming dichotomy in my mind between having Lou Beale so close to a sex scene, I've got to be honest. <laughs> I do find that jarring and really disconcerting. But was it in a, in a good um, way or a bad way? No, in a very bad way. In a way. very bad way. So the next, the next scene is the worst, most... Just idiotic scene in the whole film for me, which is where a man is driving a, a, a VW combi van thing, <laughs> tries to go into a parking space, and then see, appears to deliberately, totally deliberately, just run it into the back of the Volvo, right? which is parked somewhere, gets out, climbs over the back of the car, <laughs> and then goes round, bangs on the window to the corpse woman, and he's like, are you all right, love? It's just, who drives in? Who drives into a car park and then deliberately just shunts the car in front? Uh, is this his way of, like, chatting at women? That he's, like, he sees a single woman in a car and just crashes into the it car to talk like to them? It feels like maybe that he did it by mistake. They, kept, they didn't have <laughs> enough... The yeah, they didn't have enough film to <laughs> refilm it. That'll do. <laughs> Done in one. Yeah. I, I watched that and I was just, I was flabbergasted, to be honest. Just... But then we do go cut to a very, a pep scene I really love, though, which was a, a, a quite a... Um, evocative, historic um, depiction of what a proper photographer's job yeah. is in the 1980s <laughs> yeah. in, in, a, in a, a lovely London sort of... Um, uh, sort of uh, Rip-off of um, blow-up, basically, yeah. isn't it? Before we get onto that, just a quick... Just the, one of the things that I felt very passionately about while we were watching this, there was a point in which, um, you know, when there is a scene in the flat and, they're talking, and the boy has got his action man. Now, yes. to point out for any, you know, for any of our foreign listeners, Action Man is, is the version of G.I. Joe. It's the British yes, version of G.I. Joe. And number one, Palatoid. it was lovely, absolutely lovely to see a proper 1980s authentic Action Man. Yeah, like Hawk Eyes. Where, Hawk eyes. Yes, he did this thing where you could, you know, make his eyes look from left to right, which I'm doing yeah. right now, of course, mm. by sort of moving this switch at the back of his head. Yeah. But the thing is, as he's playing with this Action Man, I've written, authentic 80s boy noises. <laughs> yeah. In the fact that, like, for the firing of the gun, he goes, uh, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I thought, I've not heard anyone make that noise no. since I was a kid. And I thought, that's right, a very James. authentic 80s boy machine gun noise, along but, with, and look out, if you've got your headphones on, I do apologise yeah. for this. The other one we used to do. Yeah. That was the other machine gun noise. Oh, I always thought it was a helicopter. There you go. That scene is weird because I feel like the kid is making those noises, but then the voice of the boy is dubbed, dubbed yeah. at the same time. Yes. 
<laughs> it's just really weird. When you're watching it on headphones, it's probably more noticeable. But that, that, um, I, can't forget, I recognize that kid. Was he in Was a Gum? It's no. Was he in Time Bad? It's no. But he was like, uh, uh, all the kids. Generic. Yeah, generic. Sort of. I thought he just looked like Simon when Simon was a kid, basically. <laughs> yeah. just, just fat and ginger, wasn't he? <laughs> um, so, yeah, the photographer's model. What is, what's yeah, that scene for? What is that scene for? They're photographing for? Um, a, a pair of... Um, High heels and uh, stockings next to a pint of beer. So, <laughs> yeah. What an amazing advertising campaign. You know, they, that would have cost, you know, they would have charged so much money for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that would have all been done with, um, someone would have had to scamp it all up with magic markers and that yeah, would have yeah, had to yeah. then be put up, someone would have to get electro set to put all the type on there and everything. That would have taken Don weeks. Draper. Don't, yeah. Don't, don't Draper yeah. would have been proud of this effort. They would have Mad saved, Man. would have taken so much time and cost so much money for them to make yeah. that. <laughs> and and if someone's and they would hand it in they and they, no one could say we'll make that a bit bigger yeah but, you know because it'd be like no i can't because you know i've done it now <laughs> it's, done it. Tough. it's we're done. going to the pub yeah <laughs> it just looked like someone had written if someone wanted to write that scene who had seen blow up mm, and that was yes. their only ever exp- or a documentary on david bailey and that was their like and but it's like why is the guy a photographer there's no. no need for him to be a photographer, yeah, is there? He, he could be a plumber. Could, yeah. You could say get some more girls with, you know, wearing stockings in the film. <laughs> but it's, it, it has no bearing on his character or anything that he does or where he lives. It just, it's nonsensical. Yeah. So then the mum goes to the school to pick up her child and they said, oh, yeah. the, the, um, the father has already picked the him up. The father's. How can he? And then we have a very, very long... <laughs> Sort of oh. chase scene of, 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 yeah. mm. uh, on foot with lots of you know footstep yeah. sound effect fairly over the top of everything. But fin- finally, um, finds the dad, and it occurred to me at this point: this is three years since he's met missing that yeah. boy. So if that boy was seven when it missing, he would be t- t- like, "There's yeah. no change whatsoever." No. Looks yes. exactly the same. In that boy. Now, this is yeah. from, from when we, from when Ross and I first watched it. At the time, I was doing my usual taking notes. Ross, on its first run through, just experiencing it. So occasionally, I've got things that Ross said because yeah. Ross couldn't be more bothered to make any notes, and I've literally <laughs> yeah. it just says, "Ross, this child has not changed." <laughs> so there you are. Nice to see that that's been recurring. But yeah, you're quite right. He's not aged um, today. This, for me, is when I started to slightly lose interest in this film and skip through quite a lot of the expositional dialogue. And it's like, like where four people are sitting around the table. Yeah, yeah, the boyfriend, the mother, him, and like, no, I don't, I'm not interested. This is meant to be a horror film. Yeah. Like, Well, they, t- they it, do take him back to the house. Um, yeah. The dad then eats the eggs, which belongs... Eats the snake eggs. And it's like, what, <laughs> why is that the horror <laughs> aspect of him? Like, Horrific. But it isn't, because it just looks like he's eating wallpaper paste. Yeah, and then the boy walks on this, and the boy runs off, and then goes yeah. and hides in, like, the Freddy Cougar-type basement. Yes. And mm. then this is the, the probably the most disturbing part of the film for yeah. me. Yeah. Where the dad starts sucking on his neck. Yeah. In a real sort of yeah. dirty, oh, gross, pedo sort of... Yeah, the sound like, effect my, is quite... My notes just say, well, wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> yeah, because the, the boy's got, got a look that. of, like, eyes rolling back in ecstasy yeah. while the dad's, like, sucking his... And it's sort of pulling... As he's sucking, it's pulling the flesh away from, like, up in a big sort of, like, rubbery sort of effect. And, yeah, that will probably sort of haunt me for quite a long time. Uh, for something <laughs> which is a pretty shit film that it has one of the most disturbing, uh, like, minutes out of any films I've seen in my life. <laughs> I have said at this point, is it meant to be satire? Because I couldn't <laughs> think what else it was meant. Because then you go back to Lou Beale watching TV and you can hear mm. the TV broadcast going, a horribly uh, mutilated corpse was found today in a car in wherever yeah. and she's eating chocolates. And it's like consum- consumer society or like, what is it meant to be? I've got no idea. And then, and then at this point... When I see what comes next, you just think this film has gone mad and all I've written is dwarf clown, question mark, question mark. Yeah. And that's, I mean, what, <laughs> what can you say for, the, for this following sequence? You've got a dwarf clown and you've got a life-size action man. What? So, but before we move, this, this is just an aside more than anything else. Yeah. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see if you know, any, any of our dear listeners uh, would be familiar with one of this. Is in this scene, we see in the flat that the old lady has got what I've written down is a booze trolley. Like yeah. a, small tr- a small trolley, like a hostess trolley 
which is res- you know resplendent with, with with alcohol. And as I was watching it, I've written down here on the notes. My nan had one of these, <laughs> right? And Ross, you know, you can you can uh, vouch for this. Yep. That in our back room, well, you know, in her later years, uh, growing up, my my grandmother lived with us, and that we kept uh, like her booze trolley in the back room, didn't we? Do you, yeah, do you remember yeah, it? Yeah. Mm, I just wondered, right? why, why do you need to have booze on wheels? You know? <laughs> exactly, right? And then I've written down, why did we have it? Make inquiries. <laughs> okay, have you made an inquiry? We, no, I forgot about it. I've, from next week, I, I suppose. But I just thought, it was so strange that number one, that booze trolleys were popular. Yeah, mm. we kind of post war years. I know let's let's just have all our booze on a small trolley. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe if there's an air raid, you need to get it down to the Anderson Tower very quickly, <laughs> didn't you? Oh yeah, you know, kind of given the size of most British properties, you don't really need to like wheel it around. <laughs> booze anyone? And I just found it all very very strange well, in, you know, a, in this very very it, odd film. Anyway, but my, my, na- my nan used odd... to have one of those hostess trolleys. Just so the fact you have to pick the food into it from the kitchen. Mm. Push it into the next room, yeah. and take it out of it, and mm. put it onto the table. <laughs> what, what's the point? <laughs> Maybe you're less likely to drop it. Yeah, because they're so yeah. pissed from. <laughs> we have the snake escapes, goes under yes. a bed. Yeah, and then goes through a hole for the ceiling. Comes to, and it's obviously Doctor Five's S being shoved through a hole. To the ceiling of Lou. Lou oh, I think Bill's, I, sk- I think I fast forward um, this bit. Uh, ceiling. Yeah. It comes mm. down and it falls into her salad, and then yes, it and then does. she and then she, right. she finds it and she she smashes it to pieces with a hammer. Who does? Lou Bill smashes this boy's snake together uh, to pieces uh, with a hammer. Because my notes just say snake holocaust. Yeah, <laughs> puts it into a plastic bag and takes it and gives it to the the family and say. It's disgusting. Deal with that. Yeah, and then the boy sees the, the, fast forward the mashed up part. remains of the um the snake, and that's what dr- that's makes right. him hate us so much. Yes, but he says uses it. his um developing psychic powers but- first of all to make a a spinning top fly around the room. Yes, but then yes. to then to make a uh the the dwarf clown appear. Yeah, and then he says he hates the old woman upstairs and sends like the Auton esque yeah. um action man to go downstairs and kill her. Bizarre. Yes. Just a bizarre, a bit and, like a Queen video. <laughs> right. What's, what's so mad about this sequence? Number one, apart from the fact that, you know, like the, the, the Auton-esque action man is clearly either a dwarf, again, it's either the dwarf dressed up or they've put a child in this, this, this kind of outfit. It kind of breaks into it. It, it, it blows. Or does it shoot the door? Can you remind me? Does it I kind of shoot remember. holes in the door? Or does it just blow the door off? I, 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 it ki- I think it kicks a door down, Boy, but it fires right. like a I harpoon do have it in front of me. gun. A, a, um, it. Yeah, it's so, and then it stabs her under the sofa, doesn't it? Yeah, she hides under the sofa, and, it, and, it, and, yeah. and, and, and this is the thing. This is the thing. He, like, so we then see, like, from the action man's point of view, and it's like, oh, but where's she gone? Mm. And she's hiding under the sofa. And the mad thing is, is she would have got away with it if only. What does she do? Well, there's Jeez. some chocolates Jeez. near the sofa, chocolate. and she puts her hands out to get chocolates, <laughs> thus giving away her position. And I mean, I found to be the most ridiculous. Like, oh, something's trying to kill me, but oh, if only I could resist these chocolates. <laughs> and it's like, it's Willy Wonka esque. I, th- <laughs> I think, um, I think that Lou Beale probably, uh, what's the word? Rift that part, not rift. What do you call it? Improvise. Improv- Improvise that part, yeah. Because yeah. mm. she probably thought this script is so shit. Well, maybe she probably, Why else? Well, she'd be <laughs> under the under the sofa for a couple of hours. Yeah, take seven. Yeah, maybe she was just trying to survive yeah. on set. <laughs> um, Flipping through the, uh, I was trying to find that part, but I, we we completely missed a bit where the dad oh, was we? was um. Oh, Sucking gas out of like a gas pipe in order to um yes sustain himself. I'm fast yeah. forward to that either. Oh my god! Um, so I've said, where does the dwarf come from? So the dwarf is a fixed fiction of comes boy's from, um, imagination or something. Is what's he? his name? No, I think the dwarf probably comes from Warwick Davis's dwarf talent his agency. Dwarf. <laughs> See what she's got. <laughs> I'd love to work for that, by the way. Genuinely. This film would have been filmed simultaneously, probably with Return of the Jedi, wouldn't it? Yeah, so this is, this is the only dwarf not in that. 
Ja, ja. ja bitter. <laughs> <laughs> this poor bastard's yeah. in this crap. With like, his, yeah, with his rubber bendy hammer. Yeah, he thought, like, well, I could be, like, the star of this film, or I could just yeah. be an Ewok. An Ewok. <laughs> yeah. A another. Yeah. Um, so then there's a bit then where a tank is chasing Mariam Darbo's boyfriend. Mariam Darbo gets turned into a spider's web. Hold on, um, hold on. First of all, when the, the, the tank wants to end, one of the things that the boy has kind of given life to, yeah. and he's chasing them around, and they confuse the tank by throwing a towel over it. Yeah. Yes, that's briefly, right. Which I thought was amazing. But this uh, is what, ah! but we had another sex scene in here where the boy had to wear a sub while she had sex and then yes. go and play um, uh, hide and seek with him. And then, yes. yes, and then mm. yeah, we, like we said she was hiding uh, in the lift, and the dwarf was like sort of ninja esque, sort of Kato style, like <laughs> really? the, above her in the in the um, that as well. spread eagle. Yes. above her yeah. in the in the lift. She looks. Did up they and shoot he, that from upside down? Do you think? No, so he's like, actually lying on, on the, the floor. floor. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> but she was upside down. Yeah. Well, um, I've missed quite a lot of this film, but I don't feel any kind of sadness really is there any kind of exposition or kind of explanation why this boy is suddenly like got telepathic powers and can bring action men to life i think the the director saw close encounters and really liked the bit where all the toys came alive and thought i'm gonna i'm gonna make my closing remark here because i lost i lost patience at this point is Close Encounters, an alien remade by the League of Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's literally the only way I could sum up this yeah. film. Do I we mean, know why she gets turned... How is she turned into the spider's web thing well, on, she in gets, the bath? She, she gets knocked over the head with a rubber hammer by the, by the dwarf um, yeah. clown. And then yeah. the mm. boy starts sucking on her, on her side, which is another kind of quite disturbing scene. Oh, with, with a really yeah. good practical effect with all these sort of like bubbly the veins. veins the color veins, yeah. yeah. And then um, she's put in a cocoon and then she starts laying eggs. Which but the, who yes. puts her in the cocoon? The boy? The, or the dwarf? Or, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's not important at this point. Yeah. <laughs> It's quite a good effect, and again, I feel like sorry for that poor actress who's probably had to be covered in cling film. Yeah, and um, yeah. put up on that wall. <laughs> uh, and then there's a whole, it, there's a whole sort of scene here, because they find in the pockets of the dead dad who came back, they find a mm. photograph of a girl and, yeah, a, and yeah. a big wa- a loads of money. Which yes. belongs to the, the person who. <laughs> I love the way everyone comes saying, John. He's like completely shocked. <laughs> that this actually happened. Um, I don't remember. I I skipped through, but I don't remember even seeing any of this. So happening. he's in, he's confronted uh, confronted by the mum saying, "Who is this girl in here? Where's all this money?" He said, "I don't yeah. know." She gets, I don't she, know. She takes it to the photographer boyfriend. Oh, yeah. and he looks at the pictures and he said, "They'll look into it." Then later on, because, a whole, they, because they, he's a photographer, he can work out who's in photographs. Well, but luckily, yeah. there's a parrot in his um. <laughs> It, it yes. is. Um, Hang uh, on, I saw this the part. Thing. I think, yeah. and, and they and they start. They show him cleaning the shit out of the bottom of the parrot's cage. Which is like, where's this going? Yes. This, and this some spell. of the shat on newspaper yeah. in the bottom thing has dun, the dun, picture dun. of the girl, <laughs> which he found in the pocket. So that it's like, oh, I suspect that this man might be a murderer. <laughs> doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Doesn't tell the police or anything about it. He it, it, it doesn't. It, that doesn't need to happen. At all. No. They didn't have to have that whole contrivance about, like, we need a parrot, you know, yeah. we're going to spend quite a bit of our, 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 our yeah. budget on parrot wrangling <laughs> in order so we can set this this up. Johnny Morris. Yeah. Johnny yeah. Morris was available for parrot wrangling at that time. I wonder what the budget was for this film, because parts of it look quite high budget, like the, the practical effects, the explosions and stuff actually look quite well shot. And I feel like they got someone in to kind of consult on that, but they forgot to actually get people in that could act, um, write a script. Um, it's, all the, it's all the story side, isn't it? Whereas the actual practical side actually isn't that awful. No, I've written a note that just says... Where did that panther come from? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, don't, I can't remember that at all. Can you enlighten me? Okay, so when the boyfriend of the uh, the, the au pair... Olivia Darbo. Yeah, is yeah. Um, running mm. around being chased by the remote control tank. Yes. He goes into the bathroom, sees the girl um, put in the cocoon, 
comes Dude. out and then he's confronted by a, a like a yes, ja- like a, a panther it. and killed yeah. by a panther. Yeah, yeah. right. Thank you. But again, of course. Like, a bit like an 80s queen video. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, t- I expect absolutely. Freddy to jump out of the closet. Hey, oh, there he is. <laughs> In a trap <laughs> suit. So some- Lasers come out of his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so something, for some reason, the mum and the dad are now gone back to the countryside to their, um, yes. their countryside house. We kindle the past. So, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I, this is where I don't understand. What's the house you saw earlier with the woman who had who gave birth to him in that house? Was it another exactly. house? Exactly, I think so. Yeah. Did they have a second? But when they get there, they say someone's been here. Mm. So it could be that she was a squatter. I don't know. But there's no blood or bodies no. or, or no. anything there. So and no police. No. So so when he was born, he must have like cleared it all up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and then they're having like a romantic sort of like meal or, or whatever there. Yeah. Whilst the the boy has mm. now gone to the photographer's house and he uh photographer's studio when he rushes out with the the um uh the realization from the the parrot shitted newspaper that the that the the guy is involved with a potential murder the boy is yeah. sitting on the on the roof of the Land Rover is that a Land Rover John it's a Range Rover Range Rover gets and then they go off they go running off to the countryside as well to mm. the co- uh, big confrontation when at the end. When you say big confrontation at the end, Cleves, do you mean like nothing? The, the, the end of the film. Basically. <laughs> yeah. at, 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 some, at, at some point, the mum brings up the, the the block of flats, does she? Because I've written down here that oh, yeah, number one, we get to like see the night porter guy. That's it. I've got that number one, we get to see a l- very lovely, nice rotary dial phone for the lads. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 nice yeah, yeah. Rotary dial phone action. And weirdly enough, the night ball. So I said, "Has he got a picture of Stalin?" Stalin. Him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why? It's, it's so weird. This whole thing just feels like we're just like ripping, we're, we are improvising a film. Now, <laughs> yeah, it? Well, that's <laughs> what happens. Yeah. <laughs> this is all real. We've not just all taken acid and had the same hallucination. So I've got now. I've written down here. Dad's skin starts coming off his body whilst they're having sex. Yeah, which is. Bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Dad she doesn't tra- seem that put off though, does she? No. And then, so this is, I just got, this is where my notes end. Dad's <laughs> skin starts coming off the body while having sex. Dad transforms and takes his transforming child into the spaceship. And then it ends. Have I missed uh, Well, anything? it doesn't end. Because uh, then she, oh, yes. she sees this, seems unperturbed, mm. and kind of like, I don't know if, is there an implication at any point that now she has been changed in some way? So she's go, she goes back to her flat, finds all these egg things. Yeah. Yes. Picks one up and then the face hugger jumps out and goes on her face. And that's yeah. the end, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, but, and I, because my last note was, wait a minute, these things can master interdimensional travel, but they have to knock up Olivia Darbo in order to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but you would though, wouldn't you? <laughs> it, it just seemed overly it's like wait a minute so they can do that they've got the technology to do that yes but they but they have to rely on like this really bizarre way in order to like well, none of their reproduction great. cycle makes any sense whatsoever any sense? does it because it's like <laughs> you can you can infect a child by drinking the child's blood and giving him the power to bring giant action men to life <laughs> But also, you do also need to t- cover, um, uh, what's her oh, name, Darbo. Marion Darbo into, uh, <laughs> you need to cover in cobwebs and have a, um, laying eggs in a fridge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? <laughs> a fridge. Because at the first she's in a bath. Yeah. But then, and then, then she's, then, and then she's then over the a fridge. Tips over the fridge, fills it with loads of gunk, and then collects the eggs That's out of her. Right, I forgot about of her, like oh, egg shoots. Like she's like oh. birthing out uh, like water balloons out of a like a like the Queen Alien, and then he's yes. putting them in the fridge. Right, absolutely incoherent rubbish. And we've been talking about this film for over an hour now. We probably <laughs> miss loads of it out, but none yeah. of it none of it no. makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, and and n- nor is any of it really very enjoyable. <laughs> As a cult film, I can I can see why this is seen as a cult film, but I I struggle to find any enjoyment in it whatsoever. Yeah. Besides Lou Beale being murdered by an action I, man, I, I wrote eighty six minutes, but it take it feels so so much longer. You try fucking watching it four times. <laughs> <laughs> 
320 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, would we would we survive oh. this film? Yes. Yes. It's a- because <laughs> every person in it is just an idiot. Yeah. So <laughs> they're just idiots I, I, walking around, like walking into walls and stuff and falling over. They're like, and I don't I, I don't drive my car with my feet. So yeah. Therefore, I feel I could have es- escaped a car. The other day I went to Tesco's. I tried to get in the parking space. There was already a car in it, but I just drove into the back of the car. <laughs> yeah. Climbed got over out. It. yeah, climbed over the car and then said, are you all right, love? And the woman was dead. Mm. Really weird. Um, someone, someone was trying to kill me, but I just thought, well, if we just grab these chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be all right, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay, marks out of five then, boys. Um, what is the lowest I've ever given, oh, please? You gave the rats, like, million, like, <laughs> Neg- loads of negative ones that we have a I I didn't find this quite as totally repugnant as the rats. Mm. Um, we should say um, if you've been listening to these in order, you you should be you'll be expecting this episode to be on the fog. Um, <laughs> it's been hard enough to get us all back together um, to do this episode, let alone make them read the read whole an, ent- an entire shit book. Yeah. Which I have, and I know my mm. brother has, in anticipation of us reviewing it. So, have you read it, James? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, have you? Yes. Okay. You've read the whole book, James. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, skimmed, I've skimmed it. I've skimmed oh it and highlighted it. So, so, John, I hope that you will be able to read it by the end of the month, so we can get it in at some wow. point. In an the, entire book. Better, just all I'll say is a, a little kind of precursor to it is that, of course, it, fe- it features a school in Andover. Yes. And. <laughs> I think I found that school. No <laughs> way. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Were the yeah, events yeah. of that school, um, you know, historically accurate? And I, I don't fist. think so, but it, 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 fits, the, it fits the criteria. Oh, no way. Okay, well, Interesting. Hopefully yeah. we can, we, we will get to that. You did, you gave the rats minus 10, John, but after that, the, the only lowest mark you've given were two yeah. for uh, Never Trust a Rabbit, two for Death Line, yeah. two for See, Doctor, compa- Doctor Who. Com- Compared to Deathline, like Deathline was absolutely wonderful sense. compared to this. So you're going to give this and a And I one. was thinking about, no, this is like minus nine still. Uh, so this not, is abs- Minus nine, not as bad as the rat. That should be on the poster. It's not yeah. as morally repugnant as the rats, but it, it, it's a really, really towering achievement in how bad a film can be and still be released. Yeah. And get two that, sequels. It, it's all my, yeah. You can't believe that it's all put together on the same reel of film and is watchable as one component because it is so disjointed. It's amazing it's, they finished it. Yeah. 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 And the director's gone, that's it. <laughs> and then <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's what a wrap. Well, it's it amazing together. that uh, uh, Brock, what was Albert Broccoli for, what probably watched this, had a wank yeah, and said, I love her as a bomb girl. girl. <laughs> Cubby. She it, looks yeah. amazing in this film, but she must have thought, I, oh God, love that. Awful, isn't it, really? Yeah, um, yeah what, and, and what marks, what I'm marks gonna, you boys going to give? I'm going to give it a one. Zero. And how, and zero. zero. <laughs> Nothing redeemable about this. Wow. Film. Even, even seeing, for me, the highlights were seeing, Elements of my childhood, i.e., the action man, and at one point yeah. he plays the same version of Connect Four that yes. I had. Yep. It's, yeah. So it was weird seeing tokens from my childhood. Like you were saying that all the women were dressed really like horrible. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the outfits they were all very eighties authentic. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. any kind of enjoyment I got, of going, oh, this is this is you know, it's my childhood. Were then yeah. utterly subsumed by, as you say, John, the most incoherent thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, it makes Hellraiser look. Oh, just polished like, and like wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. At this point, I'm surprised that Cleaver hasn't gone. Well, I actually like it. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. There were two bits in it I liked. With the, <laughs> not, not liked, but Here were we like go. affected by was the dad sucking his neck and right. the boy <laughs> sucking, um, what's the name, side? Mariam Darbo. Mariam Darbo. Yeah, those two bits. Were those just, are the, your two favourite bits no, of the film. They were, well, not my favourite, but they will. St- they were the only bits will stay with me for, after this point. I think. Oh my god! They were truly there we horrific. Are. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said about that. The better. So have we got anything? Horrific 
have you done seen read done anything you want to talk about in the, in the month and a half since we convened last I, I i've watched loads of it um i watched an episode of ghost adventures where zach Bagans couldn't be stopped from strangling himself um which was I think it's probably now my second favourite episode of Ghost Adventures. <laughs> it's called something, the something of Goat's Bridge or something, like the men of Goat's Bridge or something. So they go to this bridge somewhere and, like, it's really badly haunted. But then there's a bit where Zach Bagans can't stop strangling himself and it, 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 it's brilliant because they're wrestling with him on the floor and he's like, ah, it's, it's, it's just towering television. <laughs> Um, well, that's the highlight of your life. It's a real highlight for me. Um, I can't think of anything else that I've watched that's even slightly horrific. Um, I bought a, sh- a book of Cornish ghost stories so Ooh. far, and none of them are even remotely ghostly. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm about four stories in now and a bit disappointed. Oh. Um, I bought that in St. Ives on holiday, so I'm a bit disappointed with that. But otherwise, I can't think of anything, really. James, you got anything? Uh, I think I stop me if I've mentioned it before because again, the uh, and like when I watched it, re when we did uh, you know up against when we last did a podcast, but I finally got around to seeing Midsummer, which has been released. Oh on, no, you haven't mentioned that, I don't think, oh, James. And it's, it's just absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I love it. Two thumbs up, amazing. Yeah. Highly, Never seen, highly recommend yeah. it. You got to watch it. Really, oh, yeah, 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 still haven't had time to watch I love it. it. The music's amazing. It's, it's quite long, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, it is, quite long? But yeah. mm. it is. It's worth it. It's on it's, Amazon. Oh, is it? It's on oh, Netflix. Okay. It's on Netflix. Oh, Netflix. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, is it? Yeah. Um, have either of you seen James Bond yet? No. Yes. Oh, interesting. Don't give any spoilers, James. What did you think? Ho hum. Oh, oh really? really? I, yeah, I was Double very. Double hum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just so you can have a rough idea as to where I thought Casino Royale was excellent. Yeah. And I thought Skyfall was pretty good, but yeah. I felt, you know, kind of like the villain was undercooked a little. But I would say that those have been the two high points from the Daniel Craig mm. ones. And it feels very long mm-hmm. with a very flat second act in which mm. not much happens. Because, again, no spoilers, but what they try and do, and this is to be applauded in a way, they try and bring everything from the Daniel Craig films together. Mm. So it feels like it's the, the payoff of the Daniel, the Craig, including the Olympic so, Open summary. Yes. But in, in doing so, it makes it really long. Um, and for me, I kind of thought, oh, I, okay. I think bearing in mind, like, and somebody said, oh, and prepare yourself for an incredible gut punch in the third act. Yeah, and, yeah, that's and, what I and then when it, read. And then when I read it, I was like, okay. Mm. <laughs> you know, kind of, so it's basically, it's no Moonraker then. It's no Moonraker now. Uh, no. Yeah, we still need to do that as a horror film. Uh, the bit where the woman is chased by the Dobermans is so, it's pure horror. And Jaws coming down that lane in uh, Brazil dr- with the dress with the giant clown head. Yep. Yeah. Fucking scares the shit out of me. That bastard. <laughs> Thank you, James. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> So that's it. What's next, please? Oh, yeah, I've got to do my one. I got. Oh, um, what's yours? It's a film called Blood Red Sky, which is on Netflix. It's a Blood uh, Red Sky. It's a German uh, American co production. It's basically um, vampires on a plane. So uh, uh, oh, it's yeah, a, yeah. Um, a mother and a son, and the mother has mm. been bitten by a vampire, and I think that mm. she's uh, going somewhere where she can potentially get a cure for it but it's, she's becoming more and more vampiric as it goes along. And then the plane gets hijacked. And it's like, well, the only way I can save people, save my son from, this, mm. from these terrorists is mm. by fully vamping out. But, but if mm. I do that, I'm no longer going to have, I'm going to lose all my humanity. And it's just really, really good. You know, locked rooms. So it, it's quite, it gets let down a little bit by budget, but yeah, right. I highly recommended. It's just really good. And yeah. Uh, some really it sounds like um that that idea sounds like 40 days of night the yeah. end of that where he turns into a vampire yeah, is it a similar thing kind of but on a plane and it's kind of like 911 <laughs> meets um so what would happen what would have happened in 911 if there was a vampire on the one of the planes 
<laughs> really, really good. <laughs> and this is this is something we've mentioned before, but just to flag it up, I think if if for us, if so you don't have to keep this bit if you don't want it, Ross. But I, friends of mine have seen. Remember Sensor? Yeah, I've talked about that uh, horror yeah. film, and they've all gone. It's really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I've just, I've so I've heard some good it's excellent, like, yeah. So we've got to try and see that. Great. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. It's really good to see you again. I hope that um, yeah. we get to do another one very soon because the next one is something I think John is going to enjoy. This We're going to watch Quatermass, or a.k.a. Quatermass 4, or a.k.a. Ooh. the Quatermass, Quatermass conclu- conclusion. I have seen it about five times. Oh, yeah, but um, I'm, you know, I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping you would enjoy watching it again and talking to us about it. There's a lot of... Uh, are we watching the feature film edited version? We're not watching all the episodes. I believe the, fe- I feel li- I believe the feature film edited version is on... Britbox, so I can give yes. you guys all access to my Britbox. Okay. Because yeah. otherwise, it's like oh, hey. five hour long okay. episodes okay. or something, or yeah. is it six hour long? Episodes? I don't know. We will find the the, the shortest mm. version of. of it's, um, it, it is excellent. So the plan was to watch that and then go to Avebury and talk about it in the in the flesh, but without doubt, doubt we're going to be able to do that. <laughs> That's right. No, when when was that? August the eighteenth. Yeah, uh, yes. that was the plan. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, we want to get that done potentially do the fog and then get a, a a Halloween special out. Thank you very much. Um, I've forgotten how, how we end this now. How do we say? So thank I, you very I much. I say love, light and peace. Yes, you say love, light and peace. So thank you very much for listening. Sorry for the delay that's coming out. For the people who are, who are supporting us on Patreon, thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, we appreciate it. And um, we will try and get these out a bit more regularly again. So, um, Speak to you soon. Uh, again, t- uh, I'm talking about my uh, digestive processes. Yes. So, <laughs> bye bye. Farewell. Love, light, and peace. What do I say? Happy day. You have been listening to the General Witch Finder. <laughs>